and we are recording. That's great. So I'll, I, I have in quorum and being um, 6.30 on February 3rd, 2021, I'll open the Bridgewater Planning Board. Uh, prior to opening any public um, meetings or hearings, I'll read the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, uh, 30A section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing a strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Bridgewater Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings in real time. This meeting is being recorded and within 48 hours, we will post a link of the recording on the town's website and or other social media pages. The following members of the Bridgewater Planning Board will be participating remotely. Patrick Driscoll, it's myself, the chair, Mr. Raymond Ajemian, the vice chair, Mrs. Jean Garino, the clerk, Mr. Michael McDonald, Mr. Stephen Geller, and our associate member, Astrid Rojas. During the meeting, all votes of the board will be taken as roll call votes. The, Bridgewater, the following Bridgewater Town staff will also be participating with us remotely. <clears throat> Mr. Elijah Romulus, the assistant town planner, Mrs. Leslie Doar, the office administrator, and Mr. Azu Antonero uh, is not here, but we anticipate he'll be uh, joining us. At this time, everyone's mic is muted. The board's mic will be unmuted through the whole meeting. And as items appear on the agenda, the project's representative mics will be unmuted. If a project is a public hearing and the loss of public comment, we ask that you use the chat feature. The chat will go to the host, which is uh, Mr. Romulus, and then he'll notify us of the of the question or um, ask the person to speak to on public comment. Um, and we ask you to list your name and address and your question in your chat. Uh, the host will recognize the questions in order. You can also use the raise my hand feature in the participant menu and you'll be unmuted when the chair recognizes you. Again, please state your name and address before asking a question. If you're on the phone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. <clears throat> So uh, the first item on our agenda is um, a public hearing for number 14 Summer Street, which is DA Bar LLC. Um, it's a major site plan. This is a renovation and expansion of a mixed use building to include a restaurant on the first floor and apartments above. Um, that being said, we received some correspondence from um, Assistant Town Planner, um, Mr. Romulus. Um, we received some comments from uh, departments and we received some uh, engineering uh, comments from uh, Mr. Antonero. So if everybody's okay, I'll turn it over to the applicant uh, for their presentation. We can then ask board questions and open up to the public. So Mr. Romulus, if Mr. Silver or the applicant's representatives would like to begin, that's fine. Uh, yes, I see the applicants are here, so um, I can, if you're ready to present, uh, please go ahead. I can't, I'm not really fully connected here. Is there another setting? Uh, I can't see anyone. I can't see anything. Can you hear me? We can yes, hear you. Yes, yes. We can uh, see I you. Can't, uh, well, I can't see any of you, but I assume you're there. <laughs> do you want to sign? Uh, do you want to sign off and log back on again? We'll wait for you. Yeah, I think I think I should do that if I can. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, we also have uh, minutes um, if you want to go through with that in the meantime. And those are the ones that you sent out um, either yesterday or today, I believe. Uh, Monday, yes. Monday, okay. So I, I just looked at them. So, um, all right. So, we have um, two sets of minutes. If the board would like to take these while we're waiting for uh, Mr. Silva. Um, I, did, I did read them, and there were only a couple of spelling errors and a extra sentence in one of them, a duplicate sentence in one of them, and I 
did send Les an email this afternoon. I did get. I don't know whether she's seen I'll it. Make those corrections on Monday. So more okay. scrib more scribnaras, Jean, that we don't need to okay. vote on. Okay. Yep, that's it. Okay, so do we have um, a motion to approve the minutes of one six twenty one and one twenty twenty one? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of one six and one twenty 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 one. Do we have a um, second after Jean? Second. By Mr. Geller. Do we have any discussion other than Jean Scribner's errors? So I'll take the roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Garino? Yes. Mr. Jemian? Yes. And I'm a yes. So five and zero. Five, five in favor, zero against. And then we'll just wait for. Um, yeah, I'm not having a lot of success here. Luis, Larry, we can see you. I, I know, but I can't even log out and log in because I'm not can getting you, any of the. Can all you I'm seeing is the, I can, all I can see is the preview screen. Oh. What are you on the um? Can you see the preview screen with the um plan? No. Oh, you can't see any of that. All I see is my picture as a preview, and it says join with video. I try to do that, it won't do it. It says <laughs> waiting, and it, the thing keeps spinning saying waiting. So perhaps can you, uh, Larry, can you do it with just the plan in front of you or no? Well, we can try that, and I got Rebecca is also on. So we can, we can do that. So, uh, we want to stop? Sure. All right. You said something about some correspondence. You don't want to read the correspondence first. You want to go right to the presentation. The, the only, I believe the only correspondence we received, Mr. Ramos, we didn't receive any public letters, correct? In favor or against? That's correct. Correct. So the, the only correspondence we re really received that we'd read into the record would be Mr. Antonero's report. Uh, okay. Mr. Antonero's report. Who's Mr. Antonero? He's the town engineer. Okay. So, um, and that was provided to you already, Mr. Silva? Yes, and we, uh, we've we also, um, so Elijah, you did not receive a letter from us? We, we did. We, we just, did. We just emailed it, we just got it, I believe. Yes, okay. I got it this afternoon. All right, so let me, let me stop by, um, I'll give a presentation first and then we can get into uh, those questions that came out from our zoo and others. Um, so the property that we're talking about is 14 Summer Street. Uh, 14 Summer Street, a lot of people maybe remember it as being Bogots, and it's had, uh, I don't know what other names it's had in history. Uh, it was probably started in um, as just a residential structure way back um, in early Bridgewater days, but it's been um, commercial and uh, residential uh, for as long as I've been uh, in Bridgewater and that's over 40 years. So um, what it, where it is, is it's right in the center of town, just off the common, uh, near the plaza, um, near the Walgreens Plaza and uh, near the, um, uh, the small, the small uh, um, sandwich place that used to be the insurance company near near the bank. So that's where we're we're talking about. And to the right of it is the um, uh, the former Baptist Church. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's if they're still called that, uh, but that's um, that's immediately to the right. And to the rear of the property is uh, Latham Terrace. There are a couple of houses that are on that side, um, but primarily to the left, it's all commercial. Uh, across the street, commercial, uh, to the right, the church, and like I say, a couple of houses to the rear. <laughs> so the renovation that, um, when, so I, I, well, let's start with what it uh, presently is configured. It's configured now so that the, the building uh, sits to the far right of the lot, which is, uh, the assessors have it at uh, 18,000 square feet. Uh, our survey came in a little bit shy of that, like 17,000 or so square feet. Uh, the building sits to the right side of the parcel itself. 
and there is a couple, little bit of parking in the front, and there is parking on the left side, and also to the rear of the site. Uh, the building was was historically served with um, with town water and with uh, an on-site septic system, uh, but there have been upgrades that have been made to uh, the building in order to increase the fire sir, uh, the water line for, uh, to take care of fire service. And also uh, a new sewer line was brought in, in in order to take it off the uh, septic system that was located to the rear of the building. Uh, that also allowed for us uh, to consider how to best utilize that area where the septic system had been located in the uh, in the parking lot to the rear, and that was um, uh, then targeted uh, to be a place for some of the improvements that we're proposing. So the um, existing uh, building uh, had a, a restaurant uh, with a uh, occupancy capacity of 200, and it had a, a two apartments above. And uh, the uh, proposed renovations uh, will reduce the size of the, uh, the restaurant uh, portion to a 100 seat restaurant. So that's cutting that in half. Um, I think it was already envisioned to do a, a smaller uh, venue, uh, but then when COVID hit, uh, it just seemed to be uh, more fitting to uh, stay with that uh, scenario. And they, above there was increased um, in, in, uh, in residential units um, to five residential units above. So what happens um, in terms of what's being proposed is the footprint is basically the same. The only additions are to the rear, there's a small um, a bump out for egress in order to create a stairway that meets the codes. And um, there is also um, uh, proposed to have a patio in the front uh, for outside dining, which is um, like in, in COVID times, it's uh, sort of an essential to want to have. Um, the um, parking in, in the rear is made a, a little bit more formal. As you can see in the site plan, I can't see, but you can see, uh, in the site plan that we've We've utilized the center uh, area of that back parking lot um, for some leaching. Um, and we have, um, we had proposed, but during the initial work that was being done there, the wall was actually constructed um, under a permit given by the building department. Um, so there's a wall that was put in on the right side and to the rear of abutting Latham Terrace. That uh, wall allowed for there to be uh, a, a love, more of a leveling out of the surface elevation in the back. Uh, and also um, it helped um, solidify a separation from the commercial use in this building and the uh, residential use on Latham Terrace. So there would be no uh, temptation or any future kind of connection over to Latham Terrace. The, the owners of the property wanted to um, provide for a, um, a, a good transition to the existing neighborhood behind there. Um, the uh, number of parking spaces that would have been dictated uh, by uh, the previous use uh, was in excess of, um, let's see, there was, I think there was additional, um, additional space, well, the 200 units would have had it about uh, 50 spaces for the restaurant. And then there would have been ones for the apartments above. So I believe that uh, there was a, um, I'm looking for the notes in our, in our letter here. Okay, so the parking uh, that's provided is a reduction from the 52 spaces that were needed to support the former restaurant. And, down, and there are 22 proposed uh, spaces that are on site and we're going down to 32 total under this scenario. So there are 10 parking spaces that will be absorbed by um, available parking in the central business district. Uh, but we're taking care of a majority of it on site, which is uh, so much unlike the um, 
a lot of the businesses are in the downtown area that that depend solely on what available public parking um, uh, you know is on the common itself so um, from that point of view uh, that has been a, a, a big improvement and it's actually um, a, a lesser impact on the on the uh, neighborhood uh, for the proposed uh, renovation uh, than the uh, previous use of the site itself. Um, I think that um, there were a number of um, the comments that were um, that we were aware of that came from a zoo and there were a few others that were sent over uh, from Elijah and so forth that uh, we've addressed those in a letter that has today's date on it. And it uh, identifies um, um, uh, answers to the um, questions that were raised by a zoo about the uh, stormwater um, system that's in the back to handle roof uh, recharge. And in so we're, we're going to add a uh, detail that shows that there is an overflow from the roof drains that in the event that the uh, roof drain chambers cannot handle um, the flow that uh, it will then discharge uh, to ground level in those situations. Um, there was a, um, uh, and I'm, I'm referring to that letter here in terms of the questions that were raised. So that was the answer to the first one. The second one was that there was a, um, uh, a question about the soils uh, supporting the recharge system and uh, we're going to add a note to the, uh, uh, what we would ask would be a condition of approval plan that would uh, specify um, the requirements that were outlined by a zoo. Um, th the third question had to do with the volume of runoff for all storm events uh, is uh, slightly higher than um, uh, that for the current condition. Um, we'd suggest to you that that's, um, because we can't meet the 90% reduction, uh, but that we, this is a, um, uh, a redevelopment of a property. And uh, so we're trying to do everything we can to the extent possible. And I, and I, I feel as though that it's a minimal uh, difference from, uh, from the standards for um, new sites that are from the ground up. Uh, the, the next one had to do with the, um, uh, a question about groundwater mounding and whether or not the positioning of the chambers um, would in fact um, uh, not fall into a, a situation where there would be a mounting that would impact the available volume. Um, we have shown that there's a two foot separation from groundwater to the bottom of the chambers. We will provide groundwater mounting calculations to show that there isn't an impact or uh, if need be, we will adjust the elevations of the actual chambers in order to bring them up to accommodate the, um, uh, the potential for groundwater mounding. Uh, the, the next question that was asked was about, um, um, was about lighting um, and whether or not it was gonna cast any uh, uh, glare on, on, uh, on other properties. And there is a note on the plan uh, which is holding to the standard that uh, they must be uh, equipped with a uh, prismatic lens to reduce glare and, a, and a, to a maximum cutoff of 70 degrees from the vertical. Um, there um, were also some additional comments that we had received uh, outside of the ones from uh, Zoo. Uh, one had to do a, with a question about building height and uh, we consulted with the architect who indicated that the uh, new roof height is six foot two inches higher than the highest roof that is remaining at the front portion of the building. Um, the architect will, be, uh, will provide required documentation to demonstrate that the height does not exceed the 45 uh, foot limit. Uh, it would no way close to that, um, but he'll be able to show that Larry, when he makes application. Larry, can I, can I ask you and Elijah both a question on this? So, <clears throat> so I know this isn't a special permit, it's just a site plan, but we're kind of blurring the lines with some stuff that I think we're asking for and that you're asking for. So 
In the central business district, without a special permit, the height is only allowed at 40 feet. Is that correct, Mr. Ramius? I think you're still going to be below it, but I yes. think so. If we're not doing the special permit, then I think the height has to be 40. Isn't that correct? Um, let me verify that for you. But it's but it's funny because we're asking some th for some things yes. that are in the special permit, and they're asking, you know. So it's I know it's not a special permit, but it's mixed use. We just so it just I just want to make a note of that that we might get into trouble if it's over forty feet without a special permit because I think the special permit granting authority is allowed to give up to forty five feet for mixed use, right? Yes. So just I I think it's going to be below forty anyway. Don't don't you, Mr. Silva? I don't think that we're, I don't think we're approaching the 40 limit. Right. Uh, Re Rebecca, do you have a comment on that? Oh, when I looked at it briefly this afternoon, we were closer to like maybe a 36. All right, good, yeah. All right. So I would say to you in your findings, if you were to put a stipulation that the, um, that the roof cannot exceed 40 feet without, um, a special permit approval or something to that effect that would cover you uh, in that regard. Uh, the park, the next question had to do with parking and I did answer that, but uh, it was asking about that, that there are uh, how many parking spaces were required. And as I answered that uh, we're providing 32, um, is 32 is required and 22 of them will be on site. Um, and that's, like I say, a reduction from the original requirement of 52, uh, which most of those were on offsite. Um, and I know that there was a lot of foot traffic before, but um, even so, I mean, only having to do uh, 10 offsite, there's a, a number of locations nearby that can accommodate that 10 very easily. So just while, um, you're, on, just while you're on packing, do you mind if I ask another question? Sure. So just just to square away the parking by reducing the restaurant capacity by half you're, you're making the parking situation much better so mr romulus again outside the special permit criteria we would require two parking spaces for each residential unit plus the restaurant parking correct because it's not it's only one space for every unit in the special permit criteria but I just want to be clear, we're making the parking situation a lot better. It's it's less of a zoning infraction, right? Because, and, th and that's what we could argue that, that it's less of a zoning infraction because the resident, because the restaurant capacity got cut in half. So essentially they're making it better. Less uh, non-conforming. Non right, less non-conforming. Yes, so it's less non-conforming um, for the parking. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, I noticed that you have a few parking spaces that you're going to use snow for snow storage. Yes. And the reality is that sometimes when that happens, uh, you might have less capacity at that point. And if you are deficient enough, you're either going to take the snow and move it off site and find a place to be able to take it somewhere, or you're, uh, it's going to impact your ability to, um, to accommodate uh, full capacity of the parking lot. Uh, now, just keep in mind, in this area, we've got um, businesses that are adjacent to this location that don't provide any off street parking. Um, case in point is that the, the, the juice mill, juice mill went into what used to be a, a glass store. They're operating a restaurant in there. They don't have a single parking space. And they didn't even come before you for site plan approval either. So I think that we've done quite a bit in order to be able uh, to do the best that we can with a, um, a historic site, one that we don't really have lots of flexibility with. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, a couple things. One, um, 
maybe I missed it, but in what the material that I looked at, I didn't see anything about uh, referring to height. Uh, maybe it's time to read uh, comments into the record. And also um, the the building itself. I, I I just I've just seen one drawing of the building. I just like I'd like to see what the building is going to look like finished in terms of color and everything about it. I think it's worth since it is in the central business district. I think we need to get a good idea what we're approving in terms of the looks of the building. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it looks like someone has their hand up. Uh, uh, what the I'm, applicants. Yeah, we should. Oh, what are, oh, sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll do. It's uh, the applicant. Yeah, uh, sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Am I on? Yep. Yes. Okay. So as far as the- if you, And I don't mean to interrupt you. I just, I don't think Cynthia, most- of the I'm sorry. Cynthia Dancewitz, 121 Greenbrier Lane in Bridgewater were the applicants, DeBar. So as far as the color schematics, we are really open to what is suitable for that area. I mean, we'd like to have the neutral tones that's going on in that area. We were thinking of like a, you know, a grayish bluish color, but if there's something more specific that the town would like to see, we're amicable to that. If I may again, Chairman, I mean, that, that's, that's, fine. that's, that's fine. Uh, I, I just like, to see what the build, if what changes are going to look like in terms once it's finished, what the building's going to look like. That's all. Well, I think that yeah, that's the picture me. there. Excuse me. Um, so the main thing, though, uh, I, I like if the, if I miss some comments, I like them read into the record, please. That's all. I think we could, uh, Mr. Um, Ramos, do you mind putting up um, first your questions? to Mr. Silver, if you could, uh, why don't you put up Mr. Silver's response letter because I think that incorporates both uh, Mr. Antonero's comments and your comments, correct? Correct. So if we could blow that up, and this is really all the correspondence we've we got on the project. So, so um, and Mr. Antonero is still not with us, is that correct? Uh, he is with us. All right. All right. Hi, Zoo. All right, so. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. All right, so so we're going to go, Mr. Um, Ajemi, and ask that we walk through the comments. Um, maybe, Mr. Ajemi, and if we walk through the comments and have Mr. Um, Antonero respond to SCA responses, would that be helpful? Oh yes, but I, I'm, as I said before, I, I there was a reference to a, a comment mm -hmm. about the height. I didn't and that's 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 in this letter as well. That that's I think the second half of this letter, I believe. All right. Yes. So so the first the first um, town engineer comment from Mr. Antonero was the proposed stormwater recharge system is not furnished with an emergency overflow provision. Um, Mr. Silva, do you want to respond to that, and then we can have Mr. Antonero weigh in. Well, what I had indicated was that we were going to provide a detail that shows that the roof drains themselves would have that type of an overflow so that when the recharge system cannot handle the flow that it would then discharge to the surface. Mr. Antonero? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if they can provide a detail to that effect, then that will be satisfactory, but uh, we would like to see that detail and how that works uh, with the uh, recharge system. Because the, the potential, but just so you know, potentially, I I always uh, would think that uh, an over emergency overflow should be provided at the level that the system is functioning at. In other words, either via um, like a catch basin grate, so it will bubble out. Otherwise, uh, because you've got a a roof drain with a lot of pressure coming from the roof, that might, if the pavement is not constructed properly, that might cause the pavement to heave before it actually backs up through the system and overflow from the, uh, so I'd like to see that detail. So, so, so I'm, I'm a little confused. So mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Silver is proposing 
that the roof drains will have an overflow. But are you asking for for something for the infiltration bed? Yeah, but I have. But my point is, I haven't seen that uh, what is being proposed to see if it, it will if it will work. So if 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 what is proposed will work, then I will say yes, it will work. But I can't tell you that something would work without seeing it. Well, in addition to what I'm saying about the roof trains, the, the, the catch basin would provide for a bubbling up and a flow to the east, which is where the existing ditch is now, where flow uh, heads down towards, uh, it's sort of in the direction of Hale Street off the edge of uh, Latham Terrace. So yeah, it, there is also some flow that may come out of one of the catch basins when it can't find its way through into the infiltrators as well. We'll be clear about it in the, uh, in the on the plan. Yeah, that's fine. So I, so I, um, I, just, I, a, I, just a second. I, um, just um, in terms of uh, this conversation, if you do have questions on the applicant side, just direct them to the chairman and then he can um, let you kind of go ahead. Okay, and I, I saw Mr. Dankowitz's hand up, so go ahead, Mr. Dankowitz. So <laughs> I just have a question. The building has been there for multiple years. Has there been an ongoing issue? I mean, I mean, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We are reconfiguring a building the water has always been there, Azu. Hi, Azu. How are you? Oh, good, Cindy. How are you? Oh, good. So, so tell me in detail, is anybody complaining of what's there now? I mean, like, we're, we're, what more do you want that hasn't already been constructed for the past 30 years it's been there? Uh, for status. You are, you are talking about redevelopment, redeveloping a site, Mr. Chairman, through you. And it's not totally a redevelopment because you also have a size of a good amount of an area that is currently not in progress, that, that's not in progress, that you are it's not, not making in, I'm that sorry. You, that you, not that? you do have a mixed use. It's not 100% a redevelopment. You also have an area that is currently not a, a, a bituminous concrete surface that is now being converted to an impervious surface. So that will create more runoff. We did do test pits, Azu. Right, so that is why you're doing the recharge. And if that recharge doesn't work, you need an, an area for that to bubble and, and, and so that that recharge system, if you don't have an emergency overflow provision, then that recharge system will heave and cause that pavement to break up. Okay, so can I ask you a question? And um, I'm certainly just trying to figure this out. If I intend on just utilizing the parking lot as is without putting down pavement, which will save me a lot of money. You, you wouldn't ask for anything extra? No, no, you can't say that. But we are looking that we are not here to design the project or redesign the project on the fly at the public hearing. No, we, I understand, we, I understand hold, 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 that. Let me finish, let me finish, please. We have reviewed an application that was submitted and made comments. Your engineer has indicated that he will be able to address those. And then we said, provide us the detail of what you, how you propose to address that so we can review it. That's it. No, so I, understand, I understand that, Azu, but I'm thinking along the lines of realism. And if I go ahead and pave that, you're going to ask for all this special attention, which I totally understand. However, if we leave it the way it is, I, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. If we leave it the way it is, it's grandfathered in and it's acceptable. If we improve it, 
we have to prove that it's not going to do it, it's not going to be better than what it is but it's also an expansion of the use so it, we're also expanding the residential side of the, the building yeah but we're also decreasing substantially <clears throat> the restaurant size i'm not looking for a college town potty central i'm looking for a, a nice place for people to go so i'm decreasing the restaurant capacity by a hundred and i'm increasing the residential which we desperately need by a short amount oh. so what does that change so i got i guess my mr chairman yeah. i think a lot of questions that is a conversation you should be having with your engineer uh, I understand that. I understand that, Azu, but we're in a meeting and we're looking for certain things. And if, I mean, if uh, honestly, if we just left the building as is, it's already a restaurant, we could continue to do what's there anyway. And I think that the town would be uh, less privileged to what it's going to be. But I, I, I guess I'm confused because the, the I think we're, we're okay with most of the stuff, Ms. Dantanero. You just want to see this emergency overflow added, correct? Exactly. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to make an argument. I think it, with all due respect, Mrs. Dantanero. I know. You're making, making an argument that is irrelevant and that's not necessary. All right, so the next, if, if we could move on, the next one is the proposed stormwater recharge system is located with the Institute Soil Horizon that is not uh, conducive for stormwater recharge. A specification for the removal of the unsuitable material within the recharge system from elevation 90.5 down to elevation 86.2 and replacement with clean, with clean pervious soils free of contaminants and other delirious materials should be added on the construction detail sheet. So that looks like that's just going to be added, correct, Mr. Silva? Yes, for clarification. Okay. Um, Mr. Ramis, I'm trying to use my mouse and can't figure out why it isn't working. <laughs> um, the volume of runoff for the stormwater events under the post development under the post development conditions are slightly higher than the corresponding volumes of runoff under the existing conditions at the 90% level. Um, Mr. Silva, you addressed this earlier, but just why we have Mr. Antonero here, can we make sure we're on the same page? No, I heard it. I heard it. I was actually, I, I listened to his presentation, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, I believe I pointed out that that there, there is a deficiency of, uh, regarding the uh, post-development runoff. But I also I made a point to bring it to your attention. But I also do believe that what Mr. Silva said, because it's a redevelopment and the increase is de minimis, I don't have, I have to bring that up to your attention, but I have no problem with it. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> the bottom of the stormwater recharge system is only two feet above the seasonal high groundwater level. The applicant needs to provide groundwater mounting calculation to demonstrate that the recharge system would not be surcharged. Mr. Silva? I indicated that we will provide those calculations and it will either say that we're fine where it's at or that we have to adjust the level of the, the chambers in order to provide additional separation. Okay. Either way, we'll comply uh, with, the, uh, with the groundwater mounting uh, calculation. Comment number five, town engineer. Information should be provided to verify the proposed lighting will not cast a glare onto the abutting lands. Yeah, well, we indicated, yeah. We indicated that we would have it with be equipped with prismatic lenses to reduce glare and a maximum cutoff of 70 degrees from vertical. So I just have a question, um, a question on this. And again, we're blurring lines between special permit and site plan. But I think your site plan proposes 20 foot high poles um, and, That's and uh, 70 cutoffs. I think in the mixed use, we try to have 
I think it says uh, 15 and 90. Is there a big difference there, Mr. Silver? Is that something that could be achieved if we wanted that? I, I, as long as my client is fine with that, I don't see any real uh, issue with uh, coming down to the 15 and uh, achieving that the 90. So the lights just wouldn't be as high. They'd be 15 feet high instead of 20. Instead of 20. The, the, the lighting will be not directed towards the, the tenants or the landowners in the back. And if there is an issue, yeah. it'll be modified. Cor correct. And I, I know we, the, he does have those two poles indicated. You're a master electrician. I want to know that. Yep. Okay. Is he a master electrician? Yep. But is there, so I get, I guess my question is just not knowing, is there a benefit to them being 20 versus 15? It's, good, it's not going to be directed towards. Um, I think it's, it's quality of pole in adversity of 15 feet versus 20 feet. It's five feet. They will totally, we're, so you don't know us. We're going to put in the best quality possible. Oh no, and I'm not. I'm not saying it's just. So the, 15, it's, it's, so the 20 foot poles are more sturdy and quality driven than the 15 foot. My husband's a master electrician, and they will be. You know, if you want us to put in 15, that's fine. I just don't want to take the the chance of plowing or anything for things to break down or whatever. The 20 foot poles are stronger. And and I'm not saying I want one or the other it's just our criteria for mixed use we say poles will not be more than 15 feet in height that's why i'm asking that's all okay okay so if you require 15 we'll go for 15 we would prefer 20. well that, that's that's why i'm saying uh, mr ramis we're blurring the lines because it's not a special permit so exactly this whole thing is a blur of the lines so do, you know do we so we'll do, do 15. We'll do 15. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, so after, so I'm not sure where this um, meeting, this, you know, is going, but um, once this meeting is through, depending on what the board uh, kind of decides, I can go back with all these comments to right. our, um, you know, staff and zoning enforcement officer to make sure that all these are addressed. Um, all right. I just, it's just, it's just what we require in the, in the mixed use section, but this is under, for 15, but this is, this is, this is under the, um, what is site. the what's you want? So. so it's required 15 in the mixed use, correct? It says 15 feet. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Um, so next question, Mr. Um, Romuel. So these are your questions. Excuse me, one more question. Sure. Required 15 or more or required 15 max? In the mixed use, not the site plan, we say light shall not exceed 15 feet in height and have 90 cutoffs. Okay, thank you. I'm not saying that we can make you do that. I'm asking the question because no, I don't know. No, I understand. And I, don't, I, understand. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anything about lighting. You know, if if we could have saved money and made it look better and everything, and you were just doing twenty because you were doing twenty, I'm just trying to understand it mm -hmm. because in, in our mixed use, for some reason, we require that. I don't know if it's better, if it's more attractive. No, I understand that, and I just want to make sure I understand, so I can let m my people know if it's fifteen or fifteen or more or just fifteen. And if it's fifteen, I can see if I get a sturdy pull at fifteen. Okay. Um, if I may interject, just uh, going forward, I hear some additional comments on the applicant side. Mm -hmm. Because this is a public meeting, you would have to state your name and make it a, a public comment. Uh, I see that there's multiple people. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so we have assistant town planner comment one. Items need to be addressed per Azu's review. That's all set. Building height, I think we went over this. The architectural plans do not properly indicate the building height. You'll be increasing the height, staying the same. Again, it's not a special permit, so we have to stay at the, the, the 40, I believe, um, and that um, not the 45. <clears throat> parking, there will be 32 parking space required and 22 provided. This will need to be addressed. We discussed that um, already. 
if anybody wants to talk about that some more. Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, sure, is, 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 it, is it really 32 or is it 35? If you have a restaurant of 100 people, that's 25 spaces, one for every four. And then if there's five apartments, that's another 10. Right. So if we weren't using the special permit, it would be 35. But like, so we have to, I mean, I think there has to be some flexibility on both sides because we're both pulling from different things. We're not making no, I, both. I agree. I just want to clarify. That's all. So if, if I were to answer that question, I would have to say, because it's not a special permit, it would be 35. And I'd also say that they could probably have the 20 foot pole. So, I mean, that, I, I, like, so I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, fencing or greenery along the rear half of the lot. Um, Mr. Silva on that one said. Um, uh, we, uh, what we show on the site plan is two planting areas to the rear uh, of the parking area. Um, that's adjacent to the, the retaining wall there. So I guess I'm not sure what you are trying to, um, what, well, what the goal would be as far as how those are going to be landscaped. Uh, we were not being very specific about uh, what would be placed there, uh, but those are the two areas that are uh, available for us. There's not a lot available on this site because um, you're either giving up uh, parking or you're um, providing for green space. So did, did you, did, Mr. Romulus and Mr. Silva, did we get a calculation of lot coverage um, pre and lot cover post, post development? Uh, I did pr uh, propose a question on lot coverage. I believe they answer it. Uh, uh, I think it's like 10% or something of that nature. What is it? Because we can't go over 80, right? Unless they're already over 80. Is that what we're already saying? over 80. We're 90 now. Yeah. We're 90 now. We're, 90 now, now, we're still going to be 90. Okay. So it's not, the so, we're not so, so there's already a, there's already a zoning the non-conformance to today's lot coverage, okay. but we're not making it more non-conforming where we, all we're doing is we're changing it from gravel to pavement, but in the way that the calculation is made, it's still the same. Okay. Do we agree with that, Mr. Antonero and Mr. Ramos? Um, as it relates to parking lot coverage, um, we just have to verify that um, as long as it stays and doesn't increase the nonconformity, then that's fine. Any board questions on that? No. Um, so on the on the on the fencing or greenery, the, the only question I had looking at the, the site plan, the elevation of that retaining wall, and then there's a so if you pull pull into the building and then take a right and you pack along that along that wall there, I can't read. Um, there's an address there. Is is there going to be a a lot of glare, a lot of headlights going into that individual's home, either there or in the back? Um, sure, Mr. Banquets. Which pro so as you pull into the property no, right, to right the here. right. So right there, so that wall is elevated. What's so that property currently is a parking lot, okay. I believe, which goes to the Baptist Church. Is that the, uh, I'm just trying to look at this. If so it, he's talking about the area adjacent to, to Latham Terrace. Okay, so yes, that property, we've already discussed with the property owners and actually they've been very, um, very accommodating as far as um, when we put up the wall, they were very happy. We pulled back the trees, they were even more happy. Uh, we've indicated that the lighting will be going back towards the building. Um, they've contacted us for different various things and everything's worked out fine. He's about headlights. Yeah, he's talking about headlights. We're talking about possibly if there is an issue because it is higher. It goes to their second floor, not their first floor. 
So if the headlights come in, it's going to the second floor, not the first floor. If there is an issue, we would put up a fence. But so, so I'm so I'm confused. Just for clarification, is that a house or is that a parking lot? I'm just trying to look on the if it's on Latham Terrace, and I'm looking at the plan. I'm looking specifically at the plan that you have on. Um, Mr. Honest, can you blow up that area along the retaining wall? Blow that up so I can see it. The back portion is the house. So back portion is Clyde and Edna Myers, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they have the, been the ones that are actually super excited that we've in we've improved the property, put the wall around it, and created it so now they're not um, getting any flow from our property. And we've indicated to them that we quite possibly could be putting up a fence and they were fine with that. Are we going to? We're not sure. It's going to be a trial and error. If they ask us, it's going up. Um, Mr. Romulus and Mr. Antonero, any idea how we, should, I mean, if. if... Um, so, the reason I asked for the fence or the greenery was uh, specifically, you know, to address your concern, Mr. Chairman, of some type of buffer between the applicant and um, residential um, spaces. So if that is a potential risk, I, I would suggest, you know, perhaps some type of shrub or, I mean, if it's a wall, then you can't do that. But, you know, like a fence or, you know, it, it's something to be able to block headlights from going into residences. Okay, so I would, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I would say right now, if you pull in there, whatever lighting that goes in there would not hit their first floor because the wall is already up. It could potentially hit their second floor. We're going to, we've already talked about doing a fencing around the whole circumference of the property anyway. So if it's something that's required, we'll go ahead and do it. It's not something that we haven't discussed. I mean, obviously we want our neighbors to be our friends. So, and then in the back of that, Mr. Romulus, where, it's, where it shows Latham Terrace, is that, is that a road or is that, it shows a public layout? Is, is there any issues with glare? Well, there's no cars packing that way, but we, you'd want the fence to continue along that wall. Is that what you're recommending? Uh, yeah, that's what I was recommending. The okay. back, back I, I don't, I don't really see the benefit on the Latham Terrace side. No, I don't either. No, I see the, I see some benefit on the, on the right side for the one, two, three, four, for the four spaces, uh, yeah. the last four spaces. I because agree. there is a fence, there is a fence on the church property. So where that sort of from where you start on the, uh, two Latham Terrace. I would say along that stretch, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's where the fence should be. And yeah. on the back side, that's kind of vacant land back there. So yeah. it's not like there's, it's a street, it's a street. Yeah. And there's not a home directly across from it at all. Fair enough. And, and honestly, nobody parks there unless it's the people on that street, I would assume. We have no, we, and we have no parking that's facing there. Yep. Uh, we, we, you turn into a parking space. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no parking directly against that. No. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ramos. Do you want to go back to the? Are we done with the board, uh, town, and engineer comments? Light lighting. Uh, and like, yes. I, like, like I said, it's in a mixed use. I don't know if 20 feet or 15 feet is better. I don't know if 70 and 90 is better. I don't even know what 70 and 90 means. It's just, I, I think we require in the mixed use by ordinance, which we're not operating under 15 and 90, so. Okay. So I believe yeah. we've uh, addressed uh, Mr. Ajemian, Mr. Ajemian's uh concerns for reading things into the public record right and this is all we received of the, all right in your comments and everything all right so we can go back to the um site plan so could i ask the board for 
Um, any questions that they have, if they have any that they want to ask now, if not, we can open it up to see if there's any public comment. Uh, yes, so there have not been any public comments on the chat, and I do not think that there is anyone that's used the raise my hand feature either. Um, so just uh, Mr. Um, uh, Jimmy had brought up a point about the exterior colors and stuff. Just I have another, my last question about the, the building and the site really. Um, so it appears that in the architecturals, there's some wood stangs, the detail, the trim is gonna be staying and restored and painted. Um, PVC trim is being added. Is that all correct? Are you talking about the exterior? Correct, yep. Yes. And then is that vinyl siding or is that hardy plank or, you know, what is, I, what is? I think that what we're planning, we, we were initially talking about hardy plank, but I think honestly, I, I think it's gonna be vinyl from top to bottom. Um, I think it'll look more fresh, more clean. It'll be more, you know, last a lot longer, obviously. Um, is there any, and I don't, again, this is like the lights. It's in, our, it's, it's, it's in our mixed use criteria, but we ask for like natural materials, like hardy plank, wood side and things like that in the mixed use now. Okay, so, so hardy plank, so you, are you talking? About uh, again, again, it's, I, and this, this is where I said, Mr. Romulus, like we just, we, we, we gave him a, you know, we skipped the special permit. Right. We determined we didn't need it. We went right to site plan, but right. we're both asking for things that are in the special permit criteria. So I guess I'm just asking, is that something that you'd be open to if we did all hardy plank as opposed uh, you to- You know, I mean, our house is hardy plank. It's absolutely doable. Obviously it's much more expensive. I'm spending a lot of money to rebuild this building and make it look awesome for the town. And if you've gone by any of our properties, Every one of our properties looks better. And it's not going to be a cheap vinyl. And it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be like a vinyl siding that you see regular. It's going to be more like a vinyl that's designed, that looks like um, maybe a Cape Cod style, even like CVS. We were trying to mimic the look that CVS has. So, I mean, would I be amicable to it? Yes. Would I love to do it vinyl to keep it cost effective? Yes. Will it look the same? Pretty darn close. Just, just a question. I had, so. Yeah, no, just, I hope that answers your question. Any board questions? Or Mr. Jemian, Mr. Geller, Mr. Garino, Mr. McDonald, Ms. Rojas? Um, just a question about, it doesn't fall in the historical district, does it? I, I'm trying to picture where the signs are. No. Uh, I have not looked into that. I can mm. look. I, I do not believe it does. The building across the street where my original office was above Chessman's, that, uh, that one is, I think that's the limit of the district. I actually reviewed it. I actually reviewed it when we did buy it and it did not show it in the historic district. Mm -hmm. Across the street is, CVS is, all of those are, but this is right outside of it. I mean, again. I know we have a small historical district, so. Yeah, yes. Um, and, and, and honestly, I live in the town. I've lived in the town for 25 years. We took a leap of faith and bought this building and it's a dump <laughs> it's a dump we went in there and gutted that whole entire building out to the studs i can tell you 70 percent of the people that would have purchased that building would have put lipstick on a pig this building is gutted we applied for the permits and we're going to make it beautiful and and if there's a certain color that works with our thing, we're gonna work with the town. We want it to work. 
this is our home. So any board comments at this point? Oh, I just uh, want one quick comment. I appreciate uh, the comment from the proponent and, uh, and I think this will definitely be uh, a uh, good addition to, to the town. At the same time, it is our job to make sure things are done right. We just can't go by that it's going to be nice. Um, I do think that uh, as much as the, the word seems to be that it's not in the historic district, that should be checked prior to anything going on, just to make sure, because if it is in the historic district, it's gonna open up new things to, to go after. So that has to be checked uh, before any uh, approval is done, I believe. Uh, Mr. Jeremy, yeah. Uh, so I did take a look at the historical district map, and it falls outside of the um, the boundaries. Good. I just, I just, I assumed that it, it did, but I just want to make sure, but then make a formal. Uh, I and statement. I agree. I agree, a hundred percent. Mr. Jeremy, are you are you done? I'm sorry. Do you have more to say, Mr. Jeremy? Not really. I think I think uh, based on uh, Ms. Nettenaro's comments, I think that the engineering is important and that it could be worked out. Um, I do. The, the one thing I would uh, think we should do is that that fence should go up as the place was being built. It, the fence should be put up uh, as the pro as the building is being uh, converted. Okay. Mr. Silva, you'll update the plans to show that currently the you know the existing conditions are ninety percent coverage and you're not exceeding the 90 percent coverage yes we we will make that change we'll add that uh, section of fencing will the roof drain details any adjustment to the roof recharge uh, for groundwater mounting uh, basically all the comments that were indicated tonight the only thing that i'm not clear on is whether or not we will or will not show 15 foot poles or not well, I, what do we require? Do we have a pole height, Ms. Dantanero or Mr. Um, Barnes, on this strict site plan, or, or do we not? That that pole height's in a special permit criteria for mixed use, but do we, do we have a pole height for, I mean, to, is, is, I have no idea, I have no reference point. Is 20 feet too high, <laughs> 20 feet attractive is- So what I'm gonna do is, just so you know, I'm gonna have um, the electrical supply house come out to the property. That's what we did when we requested the specs on the light. So I'll have the electrical supply house come out and give us, give us specifics on the lighting for a 15 foot and a 20 foot. Okay. Okay, so I'll get the specs on that. And, and I would hope that if it's the 20 foot, the board would realize that, you know, these are professionals saying that this is workable and this should be here, but I'll get whatever they, what they say, and I'm going to go between the 15 and 20. And if there's no difference, we have no problem going with the 15. Well, I guess, I guess my question is, and I don't know the answer to this. And that's why I'm, if Mr. Antonero or, or Mr. Romulus know lighting. So, so the only reference I have for lighting in the mixed in, in the central business district is the zoning requirement in mixed use, which is the special permit, which this is not falling under. It's 15 feet with a 90 cutoff. Is there any zoning requirement any for, for lighting height other than that? That they is, is it 15 town wide or is it just 15 in the special permit criteria? I guess because so, if, if zoning lists a certain height, it doesn't matter if it's better or not. As long as, it doesn't, as long as it doesn't shut on others. As long yeah, as it's so, by... Yes, Mr. Chairman, what, what Mr. Silva was saying, like, it's basically as long as it's not, there's no glare, um, it's um, adhering to kind of dark sky, um, you know, shining down on the property as opposed to adding to light pollution, then it's okay. Um, because it's not a special permit, they don't have the, uh, the height requirements. All right, um, how does the board want to proceed? Could I just ask one more question? Sure, Mr. Grant. <laughs> um, 
The building department had said that the um, fire escape on the right hand side goes to a window and that was it's supposed to go to a door. Um, I think that'll have to be adjusted. That'll be picked up on the building permit side, I would think. Okay. All right. Existing anyway. So it autumn it, that fire escape already goes to a window. And if but the, it's supposed to, he said a door, so right, but it's I don't know if it's grandfathered in. If he requests it to be a door, we're gonna put in a door. I mean, it's ultimately yeah. what he says goes. Yeah. Yeah. And in a door versus a window, I mean, we'll put the door in. I, you know, my, my feeling is I want everybody to be safe. And if he says it's safe for yeah. a door, I want a door, not a window. All right. Uh, Mr. Um, Chair, I think uh, Ms. Rojas had a comment. Oh, sure. I can't see her. I'm sorry. Ms. Rojas, go ahead. So I know that the applicant has asked or mentioned a few times that you have other locations that you've built. And I just wanted to know what those locations were since um, you're in. So we haven't built, we have rehabbed. So if you go to 478, 484, 486 Main Street, both of those houses when we purchased them were drug houses. Okay, so they're homes. All right. they're, they're fully functional, three and four families. We've worked with the fire department. We work with the building department. They're beautiful buildings now. We've rehabbed them inside, you know, for the most part for the units that we could. And they're wonderful buildings. And there's no, if you look at the police report between three years ago and now, there's nothing. If you look at the police report back then, it was a drug house between both houses. And we got rid of all of that. And it's, I mean, like I said, we're in the town. Personally, we have 50 rental units between Bridgewater, East Bridgewater and Taunton. So the rental industry is not something new to me. I've been doing it for the past 25, 30 years. I, I don't have the intentions of, and I know that this is a big concern for a lot of people. We're in the college town. This is the college area and I totally get it. I don't really have the intentions of renting to college students here. This is more in, in, in my units over at Main Street. Like I said, I've been doing this for 25, 30 years. This is my business. So we have Ms. Rojas, was that your only question? I'm sorry, I don't want to. Yeah, just because, you know, she wanted to highlight that. So I, I thought that it was worth. Absolutely. Uh, more about it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So we had some board comments and questions. We have some engineering things we're waiting to um, get resolved and plans updated. Um, Mr. Jamian, I know you made, you wanted to see some color schemes. Is this something we want to wrap up tonight? Is this something we want to get the plans updated on the engineering side and get the conditions done and just do it in our next meeting in February? How do we want to proceed? Um, it seems to me that uh, as much as the uh, things that have to be resolved are not serious um, issues, at, at the same time, I think it would be worth going to the next meeting and making sure that the engineering is uh, satisfactory to Mr. Antonero. And maybe we can also decide then, um, you know, what the color scheme will look like and, uh, and then go forward with it at the next meeting. Okay. Ms. Backless? What color scheme are you looking for? Something that fits the neighborhood. That's Okay. By the way, I'm colorblind. I guess I've already indicated that whatever we're amicable to whatever. So I guess you want me to choose colors. I, I just want to make sure. So when I come to this next meeting, I have my ducks in line and say, okay, the building's going to be beige with cranberry shutters or whatever it may be. I just want to make sure it's, it's, is that what you want to know? What specifically do you want to know? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jimmy, do you want it narrowed down to like we'll keep uh, it? I don't, I don't mean to to nitpick this. I really don't. No, I'm not saying that you do. If, I just need to if, know what you want. 
if just uh, maybe uh, present two or three different schemes to the to Mr. Romulus, uh, and uh, they can go over things, and then we can decide at the next meeting. Okay, so so ultimately, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I mean, like honestly, I, I've spent a lot of money. I'm going to spend a lot of money, and I I just so I have to tell you the town. I want two or three schemes and all of you get to say, okay, yes, we agree to these. And so I get to choose between the three schemes or do you choose? You can propose, uh, 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 Mr. Jemian, if I may, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I think if you can just propose like whatever you have in mind, just because right now it's, you know, black and white. Okay. Um, if it's like neutral or fits yeah. in with the character of the neighborhood. You know, you know, the other thing we could even do, and this might make it easier, Mr. Jemmy, is like sometimes towns will say, you know, yeah. you, have, you have to keep it within the Benjamin Moore historical colors. So I guess that's what I'm asking. If then, you want me to choose from colors that you think will be worthwhile in that area, give them to me and let me choose. Because I don't want to come back and say, okay, obviously I'm going to choose from the Benji Moore style, but I don't want to choose these colors and then have somebody come back and say, no, those aren't cool. So give me a choice and I'll pick. My own person. Mr. Chairman. I, I, don't, I don't mean to, to make this into a big conversation. If you just present two or three to the economic and the, the, the office uh, to Mr. Romulus and uh, uh, and have them just uh, look it over and maybe they can present the one to us. I'm sure it'll be fine. You know. Okay. okay. I, I just don't want to keep on going. That's yeah, all. I don't either. I don't. And, and I know that. And I know that. And I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just trying to curtail the the process. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So. Now we have another meeting. Mr. Chairman. Sure, Mr. Silva. I don't want to belabor it either, but it's really her choice as to what she wants to do in terms of colors. There's no really no restriction. She should just be proposing what it is that she wants to do and show that to you so that's what you see. Um, I really don't think that there's any criteria that says that, uh, that the board gets to choose or the staff gets to choose uh, what colors uh, that she wants to do her building in. Um, I really don't think that that's anywhere within the regulations. No, I agree, but we do ask for architectural renderings, which the, you, you which ask for them so that you can yeah. see what's being proposed. Yeah. No, that I'm, I'm not going to do lime green and purple. I promise. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, and and I I agree with Mr. Mr. You know, I think it's going to look very nice. I think the plan's nice. I think if we get, I mean. You just need to see what it's going to be. That's all. Okay. What, I, what, what, I, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to narrow it down to is Mr. Jemmy, and maybe we even say like it comes from the the historical colors from Benjamin Moore, that palette or something. So there's a, an array of colors you can choose from, but it's in that that range, is, you know. Something. No, I appreciate that. I needed that. I needed that clarification. Yeah. Thank you. I would say it would be appropriate to be consistent with the historic district. Agreed. Right. Okay. So what else do we need? We need the colors. So, so Mr. The pole. Mr. Mr. Um, Antonero, so we, we need some plans updated with existing conditions and showing coverage and then coverage now. We need the um, drainage updated. Is that all stuff that you'd, you'd prefer to review before we move forward with a decision letter or, or is that something well, that could be conditioned? Yeah, so for example, the issue relating to um, uh, the notes about removal and replacement, replacement of material, that is pretty uh, standard. He can just, uh, the engineer can just spe spe uh, spell out the, the elevations uh, for that. That's not a problem. Uh, the issue, the comment about the 90%, I've just raised that so that you're aware of it. But given the nature of the project, I, I have no problem with it. Uh, the two items that really need to be resolved, it's uh, the, the emergency overflow, how that would work, and the um, groundwater mounting. Excuse me, that will, the last part? That will, that will need to be reviewed and uh, if there's any significant change, then we'll, we need to resolve that with the board. 
So yeah. that, of all the comments, the, those are the two real key issues, the groundwater right. mountain and the emergency overflow, those two right. items. So the, so, so the plans need to be updated to show the existing coverage, the proposed coverage, those two engineering items, lighting. Um, and color scheme. Color scheme. <clears throat> And Mr. Romul, so if we're not if we're not under the special permit criteria, they can propose vinyl as opposed to natural materials, correct? Correct. So I mean, I would say I prefer hardy plank, but if they decide vinyl, they decide vinyl. So and also the fence on the on the side. Yeah. yeah. So Chair, I was also gonna bring that up also. If they if they could show us the fence that they're gonna propose to put up plus I, you know, in the plans, they've also showed that they're going to uh, they're going to fence in the uh, the dumpsters. What what kind of fencing that's going to be? Yeah. I mean, fencing is things that we've talked about on other projects. Yeah. 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 You know, something that at and I I would suggest. I mean, they they don't have to. I'm looking at their west elevation, and one of their notes is a 42 inch wood guard rails uh, to meet code. You know. If they prefer to go to a, a more of a non-maintenance versus wood rots and everything else, I mean that it, it falls under the hardy plank versus vinyl siding. Um, you know, it's up to them. Okay. Understood. Any other board comments? Everybody's quiet tonight. Um, any town staff comments? Mr. Mr. Romulus, do you think you could work with Mr. Silva to get the plans in before the next meeting and get a draft decision letter based on what we talked about tonight with the and, and with the you know conditions that, that we've discussed so far? Yes, all of that is possible. Thank you, Elijah. No problem. So do we have the next meeting? Well, so do we have a um, any more discussion on this or any more feedback for the applicant? Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, the only uh, feedback I have, uh, uh, again, relates to that groundwater mounding, uh, so that it needs to be, in order to move things forward and along, that needs to be resolved uh, prior to that next meeting so that we are not having that conversation at that next meeting. Okay. If that, gonna, okay, because that's an important calculation. It and needs to be addressed fairly quickly so that if there are any issues, we can resolve that so that we're not having the conversation at the next meeting. Okay, and Mr. Silver and you will connect on that. Larry, are you good with that? Fine with that. Thank you. All right, so if there's no other comments, um, I think our next meeting is on February 17th. That is correct. And Ms. Dora, is, that, is there anything even scheduled for that meeting yet or not yet? Nothing, nothing okay. scheduled. So, um, Unless there are additional comments or feedback for the applicant, somebody could make a motion to continue to February 17th, if they'd like. I'll make a motion to continue um, Summer Street to February 17th at 6.30. I'll second that. So we're gonna continue 14 Summer Street um, to February 17th at 6.30. Perfect. Second by, second by Michael. Any discussion on that? Okay. Uh, Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Greeno? Yes. Mr. Jemian? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We, we took care of um, the minutes. The minutes. Mr. Romulus or Mr. Antonero, and the staff of director's reports, do you guys have anything for us? Uh, we do not have anything. Mr. Antonero? Uh, the only thing I have is uh, stay safe and be careful. 
and I'll talk to you next week. Bye, Azu. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye, Bye Azu. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you. Uh, we have to vote for adjournment. Oh, I'm sorry. So do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Mrs. Awesome. McDonald. By Mrs. Garino. Any discussion? So Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. Jemia? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Garino? Yes. And I'm a yes. Good night, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.